believe. They're giving each other a bit of space, they're giving each other a little bit of freedom, but the group's far too big for comfort. I think most of them would be happy if it was down to 12, 15, but there's more than 20 in that group. Well, Kurt Stenzel of Germany took it on on the third lap in the stadium. Opened the gap almost as soon as they left the arena. And so it maintained it at between 8 and 16 seconds. Ten Kate back in front again of the group as he was at this stage on the first lap. Number 41 there, Marty Tenkate of Holland. He was one of the first marathon runners who ever used to wear sunglasses, and we used to um, we used to smile about that. But it seems as though more of them wear wear sunglasses. You look in the field, you can see quite a few of them running in sunglasses. Maybe it's to aid their concentration, or maybe it's to stop the glare off the roads. But um, we used to laugh about him doing that. But um, obviously, he set a trend. Turning back out towards the coast. And Kate certainly making them move. Nassimar, France just behind. Ike of Germany. Last 5,000 meters, 1541, Brendan. Well, slightly faster, but it's still not incredible pace for the marathon still around two hours 13 pace for the leader and the rest of the group obviously is taking their time gradually picking up the picking up that distance closing that gap and marty 10k the first one out of the group to decide that he's going to chase and try and close the gap on the leader and the little gaps opening there but nothing so serious because they're just taking it gradually they're just slowly picking up the momentum no great acceleration and there's no point in accelerating quickly in a marathon it's always better just to let it happen gradually the one rule of marathon running is even pace. The official time at 15 uh, kilometers, 47.21. Which is slightly contradictory, I must say, but don't you think so, Brendan? Well, there seems to be a little confusion. Maybe they're taking the times off the, lead, the leader and then off the group. 15.41 for the third five kilometer stretch and that is just about two hours 13 pace for the marathon actually 47 14 i think was the uh, time for the leader 47 21 for the group third feed station there and the runners are getting their own drink some of them and also they're getting an extra helping of either Gatorade or, or just water itself in the process of <laughs> spilling somebody else's drink knocking it over. It's quite a skill actually in being able to drink while on the move. Running on the move, drinking on the move is a skill and they practice it when they go out running. Richard Noreko was telling me whenever he goes out for a long run on a Sunday he always runs on a loop course and, and comes up and picks up his uh, picks up a drink because he, he feels you've got to get used to running with excess liquid in your stomach before you can actually um, before you can be comfortable with it. And there, Marty Tenkate now has closed the gap completely down on Stenzel, the leader. He's just behind him there. And I don't think Stenzel will be too disappointed to have a little bit of company. Tenkate takes it on straight away. 62, Matthias of Portugal. As 
Expanded there is Garcia, number 50. Delello of Italy. Also up there is 46. Ali Igro of Italy, or Ali Gro it is, of Italy. Also there, 45 Kramer of Israel. That, that particular move there just makes me wonder what Stenzel's race plan was. No reason for him to be running so far ahead of the group for so long. And then when he was caught by Marty Tenkate, just to let him go straight past him. And I just think he's probably become a victim of his own of his own nerves because that wasn't a sensible move on his part. And Marty Tenkate now, after 50 minutes running in the marathon, realizes that the pace has not been excessive, has not been too difficult. He knows he can run faster than they've been running so far. And now he's the man with the with the, the lead on the group, and he looks as though he's doing it with a little bit more vengeance than Stenzel was. One of the best bits of running on the course. It's flat, it's fast. And it's refreshing with a very slight breeze coming off the Baltic. Notice in the stadium the flags are beginning to stretch out. It was windless when they started. Well, the good news there for Peter Whitehead, Skyrack Athletic Club. The doctor told him to only run to 10 kilometers and let's, let's see how you feel there. Well, he's now 16 kilometers. He's still in the group, so he's obviously overcome his uh, his worry and his initial illness uh, uh, problem. And he's in the in the group there, just behind Richard Naruga. So that's good news. Mark Flint just behind Richard Naruga, and then Peter Whitehead there. Looking further down the road, I can see another Briton in the chasing group. That's Bill Foster. Blackie Harriers, who came into this race at a very late stage, substituted for John Solly, who dropped out of the race, and has come in. He's been delighted to be picked. Good to see him in the race. He hasn't had as long to mentally prepare for this race as the others have, but uh, good to see the Blackie Harrier in amongst it there. Bill Foster, 29th in this year's London Marathon. Number 15 going through. Look at one of the pins, Kadomo. Even at this stage, Kalama's uh, looking a little bit laboured. Nice way to watch a marathon. Sixty-three. Pinto of Portugal. Number twenty. Chevalier of France. He looks like he's trying hard to take the group up to Ten Kate. Sixty seven. Seen him for the first time. Strajakov of Russia. 10 Kate been overwhelmed. Richard Naroka deep in that bunch. Where would you expect him to be, Brendan? I think he's running a sweet race. I think he's just quietly away from the lead. He's never been near the lead of the leading of, his, of the chasing group at all. He's just been at the back of it, conserving his energy, doing everything he, doing everything right, just staying away from the pace. But they're now beginning to pick up some pace, and you can see Chevalier of France driving here and opening the gaps. So the gaps are opening a little. So this is the first significant move in the in the, in the series racing end of the marathon, apart from the two first, which were really Marty Tenkate and Stenzel of Germany. I don't think they were both serious ever to try and win this marathon, but this is a move to wear down the opposition. Again, they're desperate to get the sponges on board, so the humidity reading that we've got of 77% looks to me as though 
as though it probably was real. Number 63 there, Antonio Pinto, Portugal, tried to get a sponge, couldn't get it, and then borrowed one from his teammate, Matthias. That tells you something about the conditions out there. The Portuguese used the training on the Algarve in the really hot weather. They run on the golf courses very early in the morning and, and early in the evening. And they're well prepared for humid conditions and well prepared for the heat. And they've had a very, very good game. Portuguese women winning the 10,000 meters and the marathon. They're a group of now down to some serious racing. Chevalier, the leader. He was uh, 38 earlier this month. Got the bronze medal four years ago. And was 14th as long ago as 82. Three times the French marathon champion. Been in uh, the London marathon a couple of times. He didn't finish in 91, but he was 11th in 88. Chevalier knows his way around the, the marathon scene. And he's working hard. He certainly brought the race to life. 63 Pinto, 62 Matthias of Portugal, then Fais of Spain. Also there, Estrizarkov of Russia, number 67. Fifty-six. Gadges of Poland. Pronounced, we're told, Gaidus. He's pretty quick. He's done two hours, 9.49 this year, when he was fifth. in the London. I'm not sure that time was clocked in the London Marathon, actually. Guidus was third in the London Marathon in 93. Actually, just uh, reflecting on that, I think Guidus is 2.949, was clocked in the London Marathon this year. Number 56. I'm just looking there, the first Britain, Richard Nuruk has just gone through. I'm looking for the next one. I'm looking for Mark Flint. And then I'm looking for Peter Whitehead. There's Peter Whitehead and there's Mark Flint and the sunglasses moving through. I thought Mark would be a little bit closer up there. But to be honest, I would rather see Richard Nuruk in amongst that second group rather than running detached about 50 meters behind it. So Richard now has got to begin to do some work and try and close the gap on that on that bunch because there are some good runners in that bunch. Matthias of Portugal, Pinto of Portugal, Tenkate ahead of them, and then you've got Gaidush of, of Poland, who we've seen in London before. We've seen him run well. And I would just rather, for peace of mind, to see Richard Noruga just in the Munkstag group, just at the back of the group. You can see him in the shot there with a, with a neckerchief around his neck, moving down the road, realizing that the race is now beginning in earnest. Number 62, Matthias of Portugal. He won the Seoul Marathon in hot conditions this year. And look at the Portuguese. They're working as a team. They're just passing on information. And there's four of them in that group. Chevalier seems anxious to pick up the pace. And because of the size of the group, they're still having trouble with the tram lines. They're trying to get either one side or the other of the tram lines. Having to dive under the curb there just to get tight around that corner. Richard Naruga moving through gradually there. I'm pleased to see that. I think they may, he may have been caught unawares at the feed station before when Dominic Chevalier of France set off and started to stretch the field out. Well, he's managed to whittle the group down to a more manageable size, and Richard Nuruk is about 30 metres behind, needs to get closer, needs to work a bit harder, needs to rely on himself closing the gap rather than this lead group lead slowing down. 67 for Zharkov of uh, Russia. Naroka closing out on that bunch. 63 Pinto, 62 Matthias. The 
Frenchman is Chevalier. Also there, five, number four of Spain, and number five, Garcia of Spain. That's the Olympic car. Athlete shortly, back within sight of the stadium. On this, the second of the four laps. Out on the course, each lap around 10,000 meters. Chevalier having a check on what's going on. Got plenty of company. Number 13 for Finland. Hainanen, or Hananen. Eleventh in the last Olympic Games. Twenty-four showing for the first time on the outside. It's Sobia of France. He was in the leading bunch leaving the stadium. But it's been hidden in the pack for some time. Naroka looking very, very easy, Brendan, there. Just joining that group. Keeping uh, wider the rest, though. Looking comfortable. He certainly looks smooth. He looks much more comfortable to me running at the marathon pace on the road than he ever did on the track. He always felt he was a little bit short of pace on the track, and he always felt that in the last lap he would get run down. But I'm pleased he's closed that gap. I'm pleased he's done it gradually. And I think he's probably closed it because they've slowed down a little. I don't think he's in any real trouble. I just think when they went through the feed station, all of a sudden the pace started to change and Chevalier just set off and, trying and took them away from the group. But a, these are good athletes in this group. It's getting down to manageable proportions and as they approach 20 kilometers, we'll get another split time. But I think they're running about two hours, just under two hours, 13 pace. And there's going to be some acceleration in the second half of this marathon. I'm sure they're going to run the second half faster than the first half. Matthias got a best time set this year of 2 hours 8 minutes 33 seconds. He was second in the 91 London and fourth in 89. 65 is Silva, also of Portugal. 63, Pinto. They certainly set the stall out, the Portuguese, for the team race. five Garcia of Spain with a Spaniard on the inside is Feist number not very clear but he's wearing number four incidentally watching at home if you're interested in running the London Marathon or you've got children who are interested or inspired by watching the athletes in this European Championship during the past week. I've got news of how to enter the London Marathon coming up later on. So get a pencil or a piece of paper. I'll give you that. And also news of a new scheme by the British Federation, which starts from tomorrow for youngsters. But I'll give you the phone numbers. I'll give you time to get your pencil or pens and paper together. I'll give you the phone number shortly. Well, they just passed 20 kilometers and they're approaching the halfway mark now in the marathon. One hour, two minutes and 43 seconds for this group, which is two hours, 12 and a half pace. So they're certainly picking up gradually, picking up in pieces. And um, big group here, big group together. Portuguese athletes there in numbers, the Italians are there in numbers, and right at the back of the group, there's one British athlete, the top British marathon runner in the last couple of years, Richard Naroka. Some news of the Britons, we know where Naroka is, but uh, Whitehead is about 40 seconds, 17 seconds behind the leader. Flint is 44, 20 seconds back. 
Foster 52nd, a minute back, and Steve Brace, two minutes 20 back. Well, that, that means the other British athlete, Andy Green, we haven't had any reports from him. We're not sure about whether it, where he is, but we'll try and get some information about the other, the sixth British athlete. Well, they're around the halfway point. And Richard Naroka reflects on the uh, half distance. Hello. I mean, I suppose the thing about the marathon is that the halfway point is a significant point because, you know, you've got less to run than uh, you, you've already covered. That, that stands to reason. But I think you're also aware that the second half of the race is going to be so much harder. And so, with that in mind, you try and make the first half of the race as easy as you can make it, um, but by still giving yourself the best chance to, to, to run as well as you want to run. And um, so you, you can't take it necessarily very easy because it just depends on what's happening around you. But ideally, you want to get to halfway, feeling you've still got a lot left because I mean, any marathon runner knows that the last uh, six or seven miles of the race are always going to be very hard work, whether you're running a great race or whether you're having a horrible race. Let's hope it's working out for Richard. He's just off the back of that group. And they went through halfway in one hour, six minutes and seven seconds. So this, they're beginning to pick up speed. Two hours, 12 minute pace now. And I think they may even run a little bit faster than that. But the first part was very leisurely, very casual. And the last two kilometers, they've started to pick up momentum. But there are 23 in that leading group. So you wouldn't like to put a bet on the winner yet. 23 in the leading group. And Richard Naroga just off the back of that leading group. Hasn't entered into the racing mode yet. He's just been running along just been towed along by that group but the halfway mark like he told us and like all the other athletes will tell you is the psychological change you begin to be prepared to race in the second half of the marathon but there's 24 of them together with richard in 24th position as they set off for the harder part the second part of the marathon but there are some good class athletes in there 62 batires also in that leading group, 65 Silver, 20 Chevalier, 5 is Garcia, 4 Pies of Spain, and then uh, 63 Pinto of Portugal, 33 is the Red and White of Germany, Ike, 24, another of the uh, Frenchmen, Rote. Fire we saw just on the edge of the shop. It was uh, silver. 62, Matthias. Chevalier, 20. 33 is Ike. And number nine, Pina of Spain. The Spaniards, like the Portuguese, packing extremely well as a team. Well, the five kilometers there between 15 and 20 was the fastest one of the race so far. They started off very casually in the stadium and then they gradually picked up momentum. And it's going to be a hard race, this one, because the second half is obviously going to be, they're going to attempt to run faster in the second half than they did in the first half. No one doing anything dramatic, all just aiding the pace along, all just pushing along for a little bit, then relaxing off it and letting the group be joined. And at the moment, it's 24, Sobi of France, whose best time is 2 hours 15 for the marathon. And he's running faster than he's ever run before. But the marathon is one of the events where you come in, you can't have a lot of form in a marathon. It's all about the preparation, about the miles done in training. And it's unlike the other track events where you can say they've run the last six races in such and such a time. In the marathon, they only run about two or three a year. So you often get the surprise happening in the marathon. Richard Naroga running almost on the blue line there. We can see him in the distance, 
at the back of this group. He's running what I would describe as a quiet race. He's kept himself away from the action. He's just a bit detached from my liking at this point in the race, but he knows what he's doing. He's only run two marathons before. He's won them both. The conditions today are to his liking. His training preparation has been very much to his liking. But he said to me the other day that the marathon's unlike any other race he's run. He says your confidence ebbs and flows. Sometimes you feel good, you feel really confident. Other times you feel you don't feel so good and you start to lose your confidence. He says that you've got to know that's going to happen. You've got to manage your way through those mental crises, as he would describe them. But he does look a composed runner. His concentration, very good at concentrating, Richard. And he's obviously deciding to run free from the group. He doesn't want to be in amongst the group. He wants to be on his own. Well, the group's a bit too big to be here, to be lonely out there, but he's not getting himself into any trouble. Also in that leading group, 40, a couple of Italians, 46 from Ligro and 47 Barzaghi. Two Russians. Strajakov, Najipov, 67 and 66. Out now on the third of the four loops of around 10,000 meters. Nainen of Finland. Twelfth in the London Marathon in 92. Ike of Germany, 33, has been up there consistently. So to a Sobi, 24 from France. 20 is Chevalier. 4 is Feist. 63 Pinto. Portugal. Garcia of Spain. Well, here the uh, weather news coming up. Humidity is still uh, at 77. The wind minimal. Temperature climbing up to 20 centigrade. And there we're now looking at Richard Naroga being more involved in the race than he's been so far. He's been off the, off the back. He's been outside the group and now he's moved gradually in amongst the others, in amongst the lead group. One hopes that means he's feeling good. An hour and a quarter is running behind them. And Richard Naruga and others starting to think about the pattern of the race. Richard on the left-hand side there, right next to the bike cameraman. Getting involved in the race. Among that group, there'll be one or two. Well, we'll all be thinking, who's going to go? Or shall I go? Is it too soon? But no one really looking decisive.
In a moment, by the way, if you've got your uh, pens and paper together, I'll give you details of how to uh, try and enter for the London Marathon and also how your children can get involved in a new scheme by the British Federation, which starts tomorrow. A couple of telephone numbers coming up. Well, next year's uh, London Marathon, set for April. Entries close on September 30. Now, if you'd like to take part, you need to pick up an application form at a sports shop near you before September 30, obviously. You can find out details of your nearest sports shop by ringing a special hotline 0925 417744. I'll give you that again. 0925 417744. And uh, in case you were not with us earlier, we'll give you that information give you time to get uh, pencil and paper ready. Also now, news of a new scheme. This is uh, designed across the UK for children who've been inspired to emulate their favourite track and field stars. Star Trek provides a unique opportunity for those children between 8 and 15 years old to take part in an athletics activity week in what is described as a fun environment. Star Trek weeks are being held all over the country starting tomorrow. Now, parents and children can ring the Star Trek hotline number on 021-446-5000, 021-446-5000, to discover the nearest Star Trek to them. The hotline number opens at 9 o'clock each morning. As with the uh, London Marathon entries, I'll give you those numbers again later in the programme. And the first serious move in the marathon here, Fizz of, of Spain is bro broken away from the group, but ahead of him is Rodriguez of Portugal. So Rodriguez leads in the marathon from Fizz of Spain, and both of those have suddenly accelerated and started to open gaps. If you look behind, you'll see a gap to the chasing group, and there's Rodriguez, Antonio Rodriguez of Portugal. His best time of the marathon is 2 hours 11 minutes, which he set last year. And he's, r he's running just about that pace today. And when he set off, he glanced over his shoulder, made a move, made a break, and immediately Fizz of Spain set off after him. And, and then the, the chasing group. 15, 24 for the last five kilometers. Well, that's not excessive pace. And they've gone through 25 in one hour, 18 minutes. News of the British uh, placings. Naroka, you can see. Whitehead was 43rd, 30 seconds behind the lead. Flint, 48th, 48 seconds behind. Whitehead, 30 seconds behind. Flint, 40 seconds, 48 seconds behind in 48th place. Uh, Foster, 54th, a minute 26 back. And Steve Brace, 71st, 3 minutes 25 back. No news of uh, Green. Fifty-six, chasing hard. Guidus of Poland. Well, these two have got away. It was inevitable that someone would try to break up the group. It was too big for comfort. They're the fifth feeding station, and once again, they're getting double drinks. They're getting their, some of them are getting their own concoctions, and others of them are getting their own drinks plus a cup of water. So obviously the increasing temperature, we're now up to 20 degrees centigrade, and the high humidity means that it's telling on these runners but the two of them are elite, have broken away from the leading group. I don't think it's a decisive break, but it was a sudden break.
of the marina. Fires of Spain and Rodriguez of Portugal. Guidus in third place of Poland. Garcia of Spain there as well, wearing number five. Feist, 31. And his best time ever this year, two hours, 10 minutes, 21 seconds. His 12th in the Boston Marathon. Guidus, 56, of Poland. Very pleasant area. Time 10 to 11 in Helsinki. That area will be pretty busy another couple of hours. Now the two together, Rodriguez and Fies, about seven seconds ahead of the, of the next group. And just behind that group, we can see Richard Neruga in about fifth place. When Rodriguez took off, Fies looked as though he'd been waiting for someone to do it. It looked as though he'd been waiting for someone to give them an opportunity of getting the, down into the re really serious racing mode. So two of them together were encouraging each other. Number 56 there, Gaidas of Poland. Number 62, Matthias of P Portugal. And the Finn, Hanainen. And the gradual application of pace we're looking at 25 second gap now between this group we're looking at and the leading group. So it's beginning to take its toll. You can see the road's drying now. It was, it was damp this morning, but the, the temperature increase is drying off the road. And so the runners are getting, are getting warmer. Number 49, the Italian Calvaresi, who won the Carpi Marathon last year. Another Italian there, number 47, Barzaghi second in Los Angeles earlier this year. And there they're spread out now. The gaps are opening and the race is a real serious race now. A minute behind that group. A few, few miles ago there were 25 in the leading group. Now there's a group of two followed by another group of two. And then the third group contains Britain's Richard Naroga. Wachenbrunner is the German. 36. My impression was that uh, Guidus of Poland was beginning to take the group behind the uh, breakaway pair. He was getting them back. Whitehead there, wearing number 30 for Great Britain. Member of the Skyrack Club. As far as we can tell, he's the second Britain. Some of the names up front. about another half dozen runners should have been named on those on that caption because the group's a bit bigger than that Rodriguez leads Fies in second place and we've got Garcia wearing number five number seven the Spaniards are packing well is used Dardo Fifty-six. 
Gaidus. 50 is Delello of Italy. The tyres off the pace now. Well, the Portuguese were very prominent earlier on. They've still got uh, Rodriguez up uh, front. But having said that, the rest of the team uh, has started to split. And it's the Spaniards who are packing well. Three in the leading area. Faiz of Spain, Rodriguez of uh, Portugal. Are they bouncing off the road? Garcia with a headband of Spain. Both uh, looking fairly easy. Well, the impression is that the pace is building. The pace certainly is building, and the Spaniards are running very well as a team here. Faiz leading from Rodriguez of Portugal, and then Garcia and Giusdado of Spain. Then another Portuguese just behind them, Pinto, and then Richard Naruga. Behind Richard, Dilello, Vitli, and Guidus, who we were a bit, we thought Guidus would be a big danger in this marathon. And Richard running very smoothly. He stayed away from the action at every point. And this is the closest he's been to the front. He looks very composed. Not bothered, clearly, by the breakaway group. Running his own race. Probably decided what he's got to do to win it on the clock and sticking to it. 